guys. Welcome to this video. Um, I just want to give a little energy update. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been seeing, um, what my guides have been showing me. I'm going to talk a little bit about that, uh, the quantum. I guess I, it, in that it'll be the quantum field. So welcome. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome. And welcome back if you have. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about um, relationships. I want to talk a little bit about some of the activations that we've all been kind of going through. Um, and I'm going to be very general about the activations because I've been guided to, to be very general and I'll share why. So I'll just go into just a little update. First of all, um, the word that's been coming up again and again is migration, uh, resilience. Um, uh, if I can remember all the words, uh, acknowledge, recognize, recognize. So these are words I use a lot. Um, well, I think so. Not migration as much as I have lately. But um, essentially, we have this extreme influx of energies right now that are coming in constantly. I have, I, from my perspective, they've been coming in every day. Uh, it, whether it be at night in dream time or whether it be during the daytime, it's constant. And so and when I say constant, there are times when it's not as strong from my perspective, but there are other times when it's intense. And so when I went through my mm, becoming aware of certain multidimensional aspects, when I went through my processing, my first big processing uh, about four years ago. Now, I want to go backwards because some of us have been doing this our whole lives. Some of us have had moments in time, maybe when we were 16, we had a massive awakening through grief or loss or because we had some beautiful experience happen to us that activated us on another level. Um, all of us are different in that note. A lot of people had it in 2012. Um, my big one began in 2011. I had a big one in 1996. Um, back when I was even younger, I would have all kinds of things happen when I was younger that I shut down because of fear and, you know, family and societal um, things. And, and I could go on and on again. We could say programming. But one of the most physical experiences I went through happened back in 2011. And these physical experiences were very uncomfortable. And while I went through those physical experiences, it took me maybe a year I'm, I'm, I can't remember now, you know, it's kind of like, I don't remember all the details, but it was approximately a year, maybe a little longer of me going through these upgrades. And I would have this, these downloads, these uploads, and I would process and my body would go through all these physical changes. And it literally felt like death and rebirth, death and rebirth. Um, and it feels a little bit like that now in a different way for myself personally. Some people, you might be one of those people, are going through what I went through in 2011 now. Some, some people will never go through that. Some, some of us will never experience the physical discomfort that some of us have experienced. And so what I keep being guided to share everybody is really be aware of not projecting the way we think this cycle should look. Well, in order to upgrade, you're going to have to experience physical pain. Um, that would be somebody else's belief based on maybe their own experience that's being projected as a truth. And to them, that was their truth. In, their, in truth, that's what they felt that they needed to go through. Or maybe that is what they went through in order to reach the level of awareness that they are at now. But what I've been guided to share from my perspective is that's not, necessary, uh, not necessarily true for everyone. So what's true for you or what's true for me, and I don't wanna, um, what's the right word? Um, dict, um, I don't wanna be tedious about the words. I know truth is different than other words. I'm just saying, a generalized rule, it's different for everyone. So what I went through physically may not be what anybody else goes through physically, but 
a lot of people are experiencing what I experienced or already have. And so it just, for what I do, helps me to help others who might be going through the same thing. And also recognizing that some people are experiencing things I've never experienced. And some of that is really cool. And some of it's like, man, I wanted to experience that too in this lifetime. Maybe I've experienced it in other lifetimes. What's my point? <laughs> my point is that we're all going through this in our own way. So yes, there may be crown activations right now. The sun is blasting us right now with a lot of solar um, expansion, we could call it, expression. I'm kind of just referring to it as the sun is expressing itself. And as it expresses itself, it can have a tendency to put pressure on us. It can feel like we're being pressurized, that we're under pressure. And this can feel like pushing on the crown of the head. It can feel uncomfortable, or it might feel like we're stretching out in our skin, right? It's like, oh, everything just feels too tight right now. I feel itchy, I feel... So these are all the things I personally experience sometimes. I say that because sometimes um, we might say, well, here's what you might feel. And people have told me, I don't feel any of that. Does that mean that I'm not doing something right? Or maybe I'm not sensi sensitive enough to feel it. And again, every person, but more physically, every body experiences things differently. So for some people, those physical symptoms are just a way of our body talking to us, telling us, hey, guess what? Something is shifting. It doesn't mean necessarily from my perspective that we're in a lower vibration. So there is this thought that I must be doing something wrong. I'm feeling all this discomfort or pain. That must mean I'm, I'm stuck in the 3D. And from one perspective, that might be true. If someone's in a lot of pain and discomfort and they're experiencing judgment and they're really just fed up and that's where they're at in the cycle, because that will cycle out if we allow it to, if we allow and come into a place of acceptance, more importantly, accepting where we are at, not just accepting the physical discomfort, but recognizing, well, this is where I am today. I'm feeling this right now and I'm not enjoying it. Well, if we're not feeling good about it, then yes, we may be in a lower framework of our reality. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. What that can be is a way for us to experience that in that framework so that it changes our perspective and allows us to enhance or expand our perspective because now we've had that experience and we can look back on it and go, wow, I remember feeling, and I'm using my personal experience as an example. Wow, I remember feeling four years ago that I was like dying and that I may not ever be the same because I did go through that and I'm not the same. But when I was in it, it was very scary. It was very fearful. It was very... And not, and not everybody got it and not everybody will get it. So it can feel very lonely is, is my point. So I wanted to share that because of all of these uh, influxes that we're having and up loads coming from the earth, downloads from the sun, but these, these higher frequencies, there can be a lot of physical things that we feel that accompany these adjustments. I keep hearing the word, we are making adjustments in order to fit, to expand and to stabilize in this new arena, playing field, space. So the more we can be in a place of not projecting what others should be going through or shouldn't be going through and uh, not judging our own experiences, um, the easier it can be for many of us. Some of us are meant to judge our experiences and be in that state of mind so that later on we can look back and say, wow, I was really 
feeling that was my that was my judgy phase <laughs> or that was the cycle that I was in because it can then stimulate and trigger within us other things that are below the surface that are show that show up to sh uh, that come up to show us why it is that we are judging and it could be ultimately fear it could be a childhood experience where we were judged and now we're projecting that back because we are integrating that experience as a child and it brings that up to the surface so we're getting a lot of this um ex solar expression to further our own expression to allow us to then um i keep hearing the word expectorate to allow us to let go of expectations and to change the rate or speed in which we are developing. So it's it, essentially if we allow it to, it can push or put pressure on us to actually shift that much faster. But I'm also being guided to remind everybody to let go of the pressure that we put on ourselves to do that. It's it's this um, middle surfing, right? Riding that wave that can be the challenge when we're in resistance and we're not just in flow with the wave. You know, if we're too rigid, we get knocked off our boards and that can be very uncomfortable. But ultimately, we get back on, we ride the wave and then we paddle out for the next one. Um, so I'm just using that as an analogy because Many of us are getting knocked down right now or feel that we've been knocked down or feel that we've gone backwards. <laughs> I know I felt like that um, last week. I felt like it the week before, not all week, right? But I've had those moments. And for those of us that are aware that we're having those moments, it can be frustrating. Those of us that are unaware, we might be frustrated and not know why we're frustrated. So it just depends on where we're at. And there's no hierarchy here. There's no, um, I don't need to compare where I'm at to where somebody else is at because we're on a completely different wave, even though we're all part of the same ocean. Sometimes we're on the same wave, we're on the same wavelength, but ultimately we are our own unique individual express, sun, <laughs> expression that is getting a little push from the universe right now. Why? Because we asked for it. <laughs> and so that's something else I wanted to go into. Many of us are, if I run out of time, I'll do a part two on the video. So apologies, I have less time when I'm on my phone. Many of us have asked for this push. We've asked for a higher pace. We want things to happen more quickly. And it doesn't look like things are happening more quickly. So we then become resistant to the activations that we are being offered that could assist us in picking up the pace, in moving, in expressing at a higher race, a higher level, a higher speed. So until we get out of this, this and I, when I say get out of it, it doesn't mean that we're always going to be out of it. There's going to be moments where we're like, man, I was feeling so good. What happened? Life happened. <laughs> Human reality that we live in and share in this system happened. And sometimes we have this moment where we go backwards from one perspective, even though we're not really going backwards. It just feels that way so that we can still process things that if we went too fast and sped up, Right. And I always bring up the um, we would have missed or we wouldn't have gotten the, the, the juice. We would have only gotten part of it. And maybe we did get part of it. But now we're ready to go back in and dive in because we're ready to go deeper. We're ready to get the rest of it. Whereas maybe four years ago, all of it would have been too much. And I always get the reference of a scuba diver. Right. So scuba diver goes in in order to come up. They have to come up. Uh, what is it? Not just alchemize, equalize, right? They have to equalize in order to come up and not come up too quickly. Because if they go too fast, that's not good. And if they go too slow, it's not good either. So it's this, it's this, but, and sometimes it requires stopping, 
allowing, acknowledging, looking at your device to see where am I at, right? Taking in your surroundings. Is it safe to go to go to the next level? And then we go to the next level. I always joke with my friends, um, full throttle Betty. I did a past life regression once with my dear friend Jess, um, her partner, Dave, and my guidance team was like, yeah, okay, full throttle Betty. Like, maybe I was named Betty in another lifetime, but it's like, I'm like, bring it on. I'm ready. And then all of a sudden, it's like I'm on a roller coaster, hanging on for dear life with no seatbelt on. And the only thing that I'm able to hold on to is like my hands, like, oh, oh, here's, be careful what you ask for. So I'm leading back into many of us have asked for this. We've created it from one perspective, but it doesn't look the way we really thought we, it would look when we asked for it, which is why we asked for it. <laughs> so sometimes just being patient and acknowledging this doesn't look the way that I thought I wanted it to, but it's here now. So how can I mo most gracefully process this information that's coming in? How can I most, gr how can I do this with the most ease and grace? And it's okay if we don't feel that that's where we're at. <laughs> Acknowledge, recognize, recognize, and then it allows us to just relax and integrate into it. Relationships can be very challenging in general. But these energies that I'm seeing are big. So those that haven't done the work from one perspective, some people that haven't done the work are going to be just fine. They're not even, they're just going to all of a sudden be aware and, and just be like, wow, this is all real. Wow, this is so cool. And that's what many of us have done the work for so that that could happen, so that we could move into a different reality as a collective. We may not necessarily know why that person didn't have to do any work. It could be that they've already done enough work in other lifetimes. And that was what they agreed, how they agreed to wake up. It could be that we've chosen to do extra, to work karm off karma from one perspective, so that we could be of service and assist mankind. I mean, we could cut out the karma and just do it because we wanted to do it. Or it could be because we've chosen to experience and go back in and dive in and really just get all that dirt so that we could see it and go, wow, I didn't even realize that was down there. All right, I'm ready to move on. But it's kind of like that scary movie where you, you, you kind of, you don't want to see it, but you kind of want to look to see what happens at the end. <laughs> kind of the same thing for some of us. So I use different examples there because everybody is different. So relationships can be very challenging. I just celebrated my anniversary and we have gone through a many different stages in our relationship, many different cycles, many different layers of our relationship. And I'm very grateful because I have I have the opportunity to expand with my husband. So He's chosen to stay with me through my crazy expansion and expression of expansion, even though in his reality, we share a reality, we share a home. So for those of us who share a living space with someone else, a partner, a family member, a friend, a roommate, it doesn't mean we share the same reality from my perspective. So I see things he doesn't see and he sees things I don't see because he sees things from a different perspective. That is not something that I necessarily choose to see in the same way because that's my perspective. And we've both had different past life experiences, present life experiences, childhood traumas, and those have played out in our reality in a different different ways, right? So we ha are who we are, but I, and we always joke, you know, I call him, uh, or I'll just say, listen, just because you see it that way doesn't mean I see it that way. And that's what we're being invited and asked right now to really try and maintain. And I, I use the word try, because it's not always um, possible <laughs> to maintain that um, sense of, 
Aquin, aquimini, aquinim, I have like five words that just came through right now. Equanimity, equ, equ, equality. Um, what is it called when you do the scuba diving? And I've got a little bit of that um, high energy brain right now where it's like <sighs> equalizing, equal opportunity. <laughs> Basically, it's this finding coherence, right? It's so that you can feel the equality, and this is a plan words. I'm recognizing that that my guides are trying to get me to play, play, play. So it's E, quality. Um, part of that is feeling into that deeper resonance and recognizing that that is a quality. He has the quality to be grounded, and sometimes I'm not there. Other times, he has the quality to be very logical and reasonable when I'm seeing into maybe a from what I think is a bigger perspective but he's saying well great what can you do about that right now and I'm like dang it you're right what can I do about that right now so in essence we can utilize these relationships and find the deeper qualities in it to then share and I'm and when I say e by the way it's like a musical note I keep getting this reference to all these musical notes because he's playing in a different scale of harmonics than I am so it's like sometimes when you got someone they're grouchy and you're happy you're grumpy and they're happy and it's just like finding that rhythm so that it's not always this resistance to well I'm right I'm sorry if you don't see it I'm moving on right it's it's um definitely a give and a take right now and those aren't even the right words because that would be an old paradigm it isn't about giving so someone else can take or it's not about us taking it from that person right that's an old processing thing it's more about um staying in that space of like i'm seeing a rubber band right okay i'm stretching it's compromise and then i'm gonna come back in. I'm going to stretch and then I'm going to come back in. And it's like not compromising our integrity. That's not what I'm referring to. Or compr compromising our own truth, real truths. It's more about staying in that space where we can acknowledge the other person and their feelings and not feel the necessity to change that for them from one perspective, and there's different layers to this. So it can apply to different things. I saw these little bugs on my plants and I've taken them out and hosed them down. <sighs> okay, quantum, let's talk about that just for a moment. I've got a few minutes left. I'm gonna probably do a separate video on this with my whiteboard or maybe, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna nerd out a little bit on this. Um, so I'll just give the short version. My guides have been showing me, and, and again, I say my guides, it's me. It's, I've been, when I go into meditation, I see these future versions of myself. I, and some of them are, are not, I mean, they're all versions of us, right? But some of them are angelic. Some of them are future versions of me. Some of them are my ancestors, my grandmothers, my grandfathers from other realms. So our guides can come in many shapes, forms, non-shapes or forms, harmonics and sounds and vibrations. So, but a lot of the thing, information that I've been shown recently is coming from a future aspect of me. And I always hear that so many of us were from the future. So maybe that would be fun to play with sometime, but let's just jump into that briefly. Um, I might save it for another video. Okay, I'll just share this. I've been shown that the platelets, these spinning plates or nodes, if you will, they're a harmonic disc and they essentially are mapping into our system and we have hit a certain, uh, what's the right word? Let me think. Whew, maybe I should just stay in flow today. We hit a certain amount of progression that allowed us to progress to the next level. When, um, so let me pause, I can't think of the, the word. Okay, projection, projected. So we were projected to hit a certain number and those projections from that perspective, not like projecting your information onto somebody else, those projections, this, there's another word that I'm not quite getting, but that's okay, were hit. 
So we hit those numbers. We hit that harmonic. And now we've mapped into, when I say we, does that mean everyone? I don't know. I feel that many have. Enough people or enough people are holding a certain vibration that it has allowed this opening to occur in the fields, in this particular realm that I've been shown that holds codes and potential. Oh, it wasn't projection, it was potentials. <laughs> well, projected numbers. Anyways, we hit the potential. So those potentials have been mapped into, okay? So for what I was shown is that created them to activate and crack open, that's been the word that's been coming through, crack open, and this liquid crystal light is now pouring out. Um, before, we would hit it once in a while and it would trickle out, but it it's like a level. We've up-leveled into this, and moving up isn't even the right word, it's like moving up and out into this expansion. So these discs, these platelets, there's another word for this, and again, I'll do a separate video on this, have cracked open, and all that was stored within them is now going down the lines, which are these tubes, this tubular network that we are all connected into through a reality system. So you could picture it as a crystal lattice work or a matrix of sorts, right? Um, and it's now pouring into our system, and those of us that are open enough, meaning acknowledging, recognizing, allowing, staying in that space of receiving, and playing with it, are, are essentially tuning to it, right? We are attuning, we are tuning into it. It's a sound that we are able then to receive more codes. So I'll, I'll do a separate video on that. Um, but recognizing that this means this is that speeding up that many of us have asked for. So the more we can get into a space of relaxation, doesn't mean all the time, some days are gonna be easier than others, all that information that's now available to us will then be um, not just accessed, because we're already accessing it, it will all of a sudden create, and again, I'll do a different, I'm kind of losing track on this, but it's just, it's activating us more. So a lot of us are going to start having these possible amazing ahas and downloads, um, meaning more information that seems above and beyond what we were receiving before because now we are at a vibratory coherence, meaning we're holding it long enough to where it's, it's, we've already tapped into it. So what I keep hearing is there's no going back. We've tapped into it, we're receiving these codes. Now what? Now it's time to step up to the platelets <laughs> and allow ourselves to receive what's already being offered. Okay, so Back to the relationships, I've got a few more minutes. Um, it's so important for us to be patient with ourselves, with each other right now. I'll talk about more of this on the next video. Um, because what you may have already worked on or you may already be aware of, your partner or spouse may not have a clue. And while we could argue that it's their responsibility to wake up, educate themselves, whatever it might be, that would be a projection or a belief that we are then attaching to their reality. When it may be that they've chosen not to. And that can be so challenging to come into a place of acceptance over. So that's a whole other topic. But I just wanted to throw that in because that was another message that's coming in. Because a lot of our brothers and sisters are are just becoming aware. And it's so important for us to be able to say, awesome, welcome, and not be like, finally, <laughs> welcome to the party. I've been doing this for 20 years. Like, how do you think it feels? You know, it's recognizing when are we in ego, just because we're aware, and I'm using that word instead of awake as often as possible, just because we're aware doesn't mean that we can't dip back into these other 
frequencies in order to pull out of there other things that may be uh, usable for us to see things from another perspective, meaning judgment or, you know, so just kind of really checking in with ourselves when we're watching this develop. And a lot of us are like super stoked and not worried. We're just like, yeah, that's awesome that they're acknowledging that there are extraterrestrials, but they're not acknowledging that those extraterrestrials might be involved in our reality now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's layers, <laughs> there's layers. So I'm running out of time on this particular video. Um, so I will um, do another one and check back in at that time. So again, um, I know for future reference, a lot of us are moving around or we're being guided to move around or we're having to make choices that involve moving. There is a deeper we could go so many places. I, I don't want to say it's, there's a reason for everything um, because I do believe that there's a reason for everything, but it may not seem that way at the time. And there are still things unfolding in my life right now that I don't know the reason for yet. I just don't. And there is this element though of just kind of trying to be in a space of, okay, here we go. I'm just going to sit back and take some action but not be so aggressive that I'm in resistance to some other things that are unfolding at the same time. So really just recognizing that there's a lot that's going to be unfolding continuously. So the more we can focus on our inner dwelling, the more we will understand where we are supposed to go in our outer dwelling. And I maybe we'll just end on that note and roll into that on the next the next video. So thank you so much for tuning in. In love and light, guys. Namaste.